What his fate would be, he did not know, but he felt that he was held for the coming of that frightful soul and messenger of Infinity's other gods, the crawling chaos, the dweller of darkness, the faceless god, the black pharaoh, Neolarthotep. Unlike many of the other deities that appear in the Cthulhu Mythos, Neolarthotep has an endless list of names that he goes by, with the crawling chaos being the most widely recognised. Neolarthotep was first mentioned by Lovecraft in a poem that he wrote in 1920. Here Lovecraft described him as a tall, sinister man, with a complexion that suggested he could have been an Egyptian pharaoh. The majority of the story is spent describing how Neolarthotep is able to gather a legion of followers with the use of strange enchanting instruments. As these followers lose sight of their own reality, Neolarthotep's cause becomes their own, and the story eventually ends with the narrator becoming a servant of Neolarthotep and the nightmare that he warned against. Lovecraft describes this entire experience as a nightmare, and that is because Neolarthotep is in fact based off a nightmare that Lovecraft had himself as a child. Lovecraft would then go on to feature Neolarthotep in the dream quest of Unknown Kadeth, and this time it is made very clear to us that he does assume the form of an Egyptian pharaoh. We also learn that this is just one of his many avatars that he uses to roam the earth. Neolarthotep may only appear in four or five stories, but he's mentioned in several more, and he quickly became a favourite of writers involved in Lovecraft's work, and even those outside of the mythos. As a result of this, he can be found in all sorts of novels, comics, games, and even some manga and anime, where he actually appears as a teenage schoolgirl looking for love, but that is something I'll leave for you guys to research. It was eventually established that Neolarthotep was the son of Azathoth, and unlike many of the other great old ones, he was free to roam the earth as he pleased in his many avatars, interacting with humankind and acting as a messenger. Neolarthotep is arguably the most used of all of the deities in the entirety of the Cthulhu mythos, and I feel like part of this comes down to the fact that he is often depicted as the most human god, and I use the term human quite lightly, because he is said to have around a thousand different forms, and many of these are far from human, but he does have several avatars such as the pharaoh we mentioned earlier that do closely resemble a human. And this leads us to one of his most obvious abilities, the ability to shapeshift. The extent of this power is unknown, but we do know that he can appear as a human, and far more disturbing monstrosities. Many have theorised that he may in fact be capable of mimicking the image of the outer gods and other deities. He may not be as powerful as Azathoth and some of the other outer gods, but Neolarthotep does almost have an endless list of powers that change depending on which form he assumes. These range from immortality and invulnerability to enhanced strength and all forms of magic. But his greatest power lies in his personality and the art of manipulation. Unlike the outer gods and a lot of cosmic horror, we can actually understand and comprehend Neolarthotep as some of his motives and desires appear to be very human. He is cruel, sadistic and manipulative, he takes pleasure in driving humans insane, striking bargains that he knows he cannot honour, and watching as those he manipulates seal their own destruction. Being able to roam freely amongst mortals in any shape or form that he desires, spreading his vile agenda, has fueled the belief that it won't be the beings from outside that destroy our world, but Neolarthotep from within. This is a theory that I don't exactly agree with. Neolarthotep does have the power to destroy the world if that is what he desired, but I don't think he does. As someone who takes pleasure in manipulation and spreading chaos, it's clear that humans may in fact be his favourite toy. There are other alien races that exist in the Cthulhu Mythos, but he has chosen to make Earth his home, and that could be because humans are the most fun to torture. What I do truly love about the Cthulhu Mythos, and what I find myself continuously mentioning, is how open it is to interpretation. I personally think that Neolarthotep is the most complex and interesting of all of the deities that appear in the Cthulhu Mythos, and my take on him is as follows. Many people assume that he is the messenger to Azathoth and the Outer Gods. He does their bidding, and through him they will one day be brought forward into our dimension. I do agree that this is perhaps why he was sent to our planet in the very beginning, but I think this soon changed. With Neolarthotep being extremely powerful, but still in the shadow of some of the other deities, he found himself on a planet where he could reign supreme, a planet that he could corrupt from the inside. He may still remain loyal to Azathoth, his creator, but I don't think he owes the other deities anything. He does serve numerous of the other gods' cults by taking care of them in their absence, but that does raise the question as to whether he is doing this for his own benefit. I don't believe that Neolarthotep will destroy our planet, but rather watch on in pleasure as it burns and devours itself. Cosmic horror and the fear of the unknown is undoubtedly quite terrifying, but I think what makes Neolarthotep such a horrific figure is the fact that he represents a very human evil. The fear of something you cannot comprehend and do not understand is one thing, but the fear of our very own nature and the evil acts that we are capable of committing is another. Having now heard my interpretation of Neolarthotep, I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.